always thought that being targeted for your life was something that only happened in dramas or comics. Never did I imagine that I'd actually find myself in such a situation. The events of that day are still etched in my mind, accompanied by a deep sense of fear. Today, I want to share the most sinister form of harassment I've experienced from my mother-in-law, or Mill for short. My name is Catherine. I'm 30 years old. I'm a homemaker taking care of my family. I live with my husband, Tyler, who's a sales rep, and our 10-year-old son, Lauren. I met Tyler three years ago through a mutual acquaintance at a company where I was working at the time. He's a good guy, previously married. Want to meet him? I was hesitant at first, being introduced to a divorced man with a child while I was single. But when I met Tyler and Lauren, they were both so genuine and adorable that I was completely smitten. Tyler and I hit it off immediately and got married within six months. Lauren quickly warmed up to me, and the three of us became a close-knit family. Weekend drives, family camping trips. For three years, every day was fulfilling. Finally, the moment we'd been waiting for arrived. Big news, you two. We're having a baby. Really? Thank you, Catherine. Is it a boy or a girl? It seemed like we we're expecting a girl. I couldn't wait to hold my own child in my arms. Let's do our best together. I'm going to be a new mom again. I talked to my unborn child every day. Everything was going smoothly. I thought so and never doubted it. Or so I thought. Until my father-in-law, who had been seriously ill, passed away. And my mother-in-law started acting out. About two months after his passing, mother-in-law began summoning me to her home more frequently. Our apartment is only a 15-minute drive from her place. But being called over almost every day was stressful. Don't worry about coming every day. My legs should get better soon. Of course, mother-in-law. Let's get started. At that time, mother-in-law had injured her leg and was using a cane, even indoors. As her daughter-in-law, it was my role to help with errands and other chores. I didn't mind the work itself. I'm not one to shy away from physical labor. The problem was the constant complaints about Tyler's ex-wife while I was working. She was a terrible wife, always timid and inefficient. She couldn't cook to save her life. Meat was always tough and the soup was too spicy. Even her cleaning was sloppy. She couldn't even use a mop properly, let alone wring out a cloth. Her laundry skills were also lacking. She wouldn't hand wash items that needed it. The complaints were incessant and malicious. I had never explicitly asked why Tyler and his ex-wife divorced, but I wouldn't have been surprised if mother-in-law had something to do with it. My suspicions would soon become a reality. It was around the time I'd reached my ninth month of pregnancy, and my belly had grown quite large. I got a call from mother-in-law. Would you like to have dinner together? Could you prepare my portion too? At that time, it wasn't uncommon for the four of us to share meals. But that evening, I got an urgent message from Tyler. I'll be home late tonight. Go ahead and have dinner without me. Mother-in-law was clearly displeased that she wouldn't get to see her grandson. What's with this meat? It's so tough to chew. Did you buy the cheap stuff? Well, we can't always afford the best. And this soup tastes like water, worse than hospital food. I tried to keep the salt low. The atmosphere at the dinner table was terrible, thanks to mother-in-law's constant complaints. Lauren seemed quieter than usual, as if he wanted to finish eating and leave. After dinner, while I was doing the dishes, mother-in-law started whispering something from behind me. The bigger your belly gets, the further Tyler and Lauren tripped away from me. Mother-in-law, is something wrong? He used to rely on me a lot right after the divorce. I'm sorry, I can't hear you well over the water. Everyone's leaving me! Um, mother-in-law? You're in the way. You're not needed. I turned around to see mother-in-law raising a frying pan. Get lost, you worthless wife. What are you doing? Tyler's shout stopped mother-in-law in her tracks. Stop it, mom. What are you trying to do to Catherine? Tyler had come home just in time. I was so shocked that my legs gave out and I collapsed. Memories from the past few months flooded back into my mind. It started around my sixth month of pregnancy. Mother-in-law began visiting our home more frequently making me constantly on edge. I never knew when she might drop by unannounced. I couldn't afford any slip-ups or oversights in my housework. Even my clothing couldn't be too casual. 
It was a series of restless days. Most of the conversations with mother-in-law revolved around my pregnancy. How's everything going? It's a girl, right? Is everything on track? So far, so good. I'm keeping a close eye on my weight. I was initially glad she seemed so concerned. At first, I honestly thought so. But as time went on, her behavior became increasingly unsettling. I had been strictly advised by my obstetrician to avoid excessive sugar intake. Too high of blood sugar levels could affect the baby. I thought I had communicated this to my mother-in-law repeatedly. Yet, she would say, Here are some sweets I brought, and I got some fruit. It was on sale! It was hard to refuse when she offered them with a smile. And every time I did refuse, explaining why she'd get clearly upset. As my belly grew, mother-in-law's interference intensified. I can do the cleaning. You should relax, Catherine. Such offers seemed helpful at first. But when I looked around the room after she left, Wait, where's our photo from last year's trip? The whole frame is gone. Important items would go missing. And quite frequently. Oh, sorry, Catherine. I broke another plate. It's okay, mother-in-law. Are you hurt? I'll clean it up. Dishes and glasses would get broken. My distrust of mother-in-law grew stronger and more irrepressible. Naturally, I talked to Tyler about it. Do you think she doesn't like me deep down? I feel some hostility from her. I'll subtly check it out. Sorry you have to go through this. Thanks to Tyler, who was always on my side, I managed to get by. Around my seventh month of pregnancy, my belly had grown significantly and the strain on my back was increasing. Despite this, mother-in-law started summoning me to her house frequently again. She'd make me do chores, citing her aching legs or bad stomach as reasons. Sometimes she'd even say she was going out with friends and needed me to handle the housework. If I tried to resist, saying I was also struggling, she'd get furious. Pregnancy isn't an illness. How cold-hearted. What a disappointment. Doing the chores, even if they were tough, was better than facing her wrath. While I was enduring and doing the housework, she'd say, Why the sour face? I'm making you exercise for your own good. She claimed that lying around all day was bad for both the baby and me. I understood her point, but I wanted to do things at my own pace. Unable to argue or show my feelings, I went through a truly difficult phase. If chores extended into lunchtime, I'd eat at mother-in-law's house. Sometimes she'd prepare lunch for me. But when she did, here you go. It's just store-bought, but it's not bad. The food she served was clearly spoiled. If I didn't eat it or pointed out it was rotten, she'd scold me. If you don't like it, don't eat it. But after I went through all of the trouble of preparing it, she frowns and taunts me. No amount of apologizing would make her forgive me. During these tough times, Lauren was my emotional and physical support. I can do the mopping for you. Bending over must be hard, right? Thank you, Lauren. You're a lifesaver. Lauren was a perceptive and smart kid, always helping me out. The only one who wasn't fun was mother-in-law. She always tried to win her grandson over. How about some candy? Never mind, Catherine. She tried to lure Lauren with juice or an interesting cartoon. But Lauren would say, I'm good. Don't worry about it. Then she'd say something cold. The colder she was to me, the more she was disliked by her grandson. Of course, Tyler was always on my side. Whenever he had a day off, he'd visit mother-in-law's house and scold her multiple times. Stop making Catherine do all the work and feeding her spoiled food. I've never done such a thing. Tyler, you're being deceived. What would Catherine gain from deceiving me? You're really losing it, Mom. Are you saying I have dementia or what? And so the relationship between mother-in-law and us deteriorated day by day around my eighth month of pregnancy when I was mentally and physically drained. A stranger approached me while I was shopping. Excuse me, you're Tyler's wife, right? I'm actually his ex-wife. Unexpectedly, I was approached by Tyler's ex-wife. She said she had something to talk about, so we went to a nearby cafe. Just like mother-in-law had described, Sophia was a quiet and reserved person. But what she told me was unbelievable, completely opposite to her demeanor. She tried to take my life. What? She tried to kill you? By she, I mean mother-in-law, of course. Sophia said. She told me that she had faced various forms of harassment from mother-in-law while pregnant with Lauren. Being fed spoiled food, forced to do endless chores, and scolded if she resisted. 
It was a miracle that Lauren was born healthy in such a toxic environment. The harassment continued even after giving birth. I was treated like an intruder. Mother-in-law took Lauren away from Sophia and kept piling on the chores. Then one day, I felt a strong impact on my head and collapsed. A pot that was stored up high had fallen. That's what mother-in-law told the authorities. But I couldn't believe that was all there was to it. Sophia suspected mother-in-law had done something to her. Tyler couldn't change the situation. So Sophia, sensing danger, chose to divorce him. She left Lauren with Tyler due to her financial instability. Sophia repeatedly warned me to be cautious around mother-in-law. Please be careful. Take whatever precautions you can. Thank you for your concern. I'll do my best. When I told her how wonderfully Lauren had grown up, Sophia cried tears of joy. For her sake, too, I had to protect my family's well-being. I decided to take all necessary precautions. About a month later, that dreadful dinner happened. Tyler took the frying pan away from mother-in-law, who shook her head, saying, I didn't do anything. I was just putting the pan away. That's when Lauren, hiding behind Tyler, glared at mother-in-law. She's lying. I saw it. Grandma's lying. I agree. It looked like you were trying to hit Catherine. No, you're mistaken. Shall we check then? Check? What do you mean? I operated my phone and launched a special app. What? This room is on camera? I had cameras installed in the living room and kitchen. It was a precaution I took after Sophia's warning. When I played back the footage, there was mother-in-law trying to hit me with the frying pan. Mom, explain yourself. Cornered, mother-in-law was now almost in tears. I was just... I was just jealous that you were taken away from me. Her reasoning was utterly selfish. She had hoped to live with Tyler again after his divorce, but was disappointed when he remarried so quickly. She felt robbed of the chance to have her son and grandson all to herself. Mother-in-law kept repeating these selfish claims. How dare you come into our lives and steal everything? Both Lauren and I felt disgusted by her words. Tyler's face turned red with anger. How could you say that to my mom? Apologize. Apologize now. That day, after a heated argument, mother-in-law was kicked out of our house. Later, Tyler declared he would sever all ties with his mother. I will never see mom again, no matter what. And no financial support either. Wait, please, I'm sorry. I've learned my lesson. It was no surprise that Tyler was furious. Part of his anger stemmed from the fact that I had told him everything Sophia had shared with me. Until then, Tyler had never thought his mother could harm Sophia. Realizing he had been wrong all along, he was visibly frustrated. Don't ever show your face to us again, got it? With that final word, mother-in-law left, tears in her eyes. A few weeks later, I gave birth to a baby girl without any stress. Life has been peaceful, and we're enjoying our time with the newborn. As for mother-in-law, she seems to be struggling financially since losing her son's support. She's working part-time, but is reportedly having a hard time dealing with harassment from a younger manager. I heard this directly from mother-in-law when she called to ask for financial help. Life is so hard for me right now. I'm barely getting by. I understand that we have our own expenses with raising a child. Please, can't you help? Even 200 a month or 100 if that's too much. I'm sorry, I have to hang up now. Please don't call us again. Ignoring her pleas to wait, I ended the call and immediately blocked her number. After that, mother-in-law apparently took on more work. She's working mornings at a fast food restaurant and afternoons stocking shelves and working the cash register at a supermarket. I heard this from Sophia. When we met up recently, after a long time, I saw her at the supermarket by chance and she looked so thin, like a different person like a zombie. She didn't even notice Sophia standing right in front of her. If only mother-in-law had been kind, things wouldn't have come to this. It's a pitiful situation, but she brought it upon herself. I hope she reflects on her actions and finds a way to make it through life.